Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist, DT, here from Weather Risk, your captain of chaos, your colonel confusion, your commander of catastrophe. Let's talk about This Week in Weather. Now, usually I do these reports on Thursdays, but um, kind of a little burnout from after Hurricane Erin, so I decided to do it a day later. In any event, uh, we're going to be talking about here whether or not we have an early autumn or a fake early autumn coming. And of course, here's, here's the website if you haven't seen it before. I'm sure many of you have. And uh, of course, on the website, we have a, sh a shopping cart where you can get many of our different products from. Our grain weather products, our operational forecasting, and the three-week newsletter. This here is the Weather Risk Grains uh, Twitter page. And this is the Blue Sky page where I put the operational forecast as well. And then this here is the uh, Mid-Atlantic forecast, only $35 a month. You got all the Mid-Atlantic region here, Maryland, Delaware, West Virginia, Virginia, North Carolina, broke up the 12 zones. You get temperatures, your winds, your precipitation, cloud cover, uh, the maps in this discussion, all for 35 bucks a month. Very useful. I have a lot of people that use the different reasons, people that pour concrete, that pave tar, uh, the landscaping, uh, some vineyards use it as well. House painters is just all around useful product, only 35 bucks a month. All right, we're going to start out taking a look at the atmosphere by here the uh, latest uh, ENSO forecast from the CFS. And what's important to notice here is that uh, the new, new data is actually showing weak La Nina conditions. It's been dropping here over the past few weeks, so we're now getting to around almost one degree centigrade below normal in October, November, into early December. Now, after that, it rises rapidly back to neutral conditions. But because of this now dip, which has been building over the past couple of weeks, um, uh, what happens is that the uh, CPC folks are now talking about a weak La Nina event for the autumn. Now, they think it's going to be very weak and shallow and that it's going to be over by December, but they see one coming. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, it's possible that as more data comes in, this La Nina could end up being extending into the winter, but we don't know that yet. So, and this is one of the reasons, by the way, these early, early almanacs with their winter forecasts are just complete bullshit. So, now this here is the latest sea surface temperature map as of August 20th. And again, here, lots of important information. Area A is this massive pool of really warm sea surface temperatures running from Korea and Japan over to, well, now has now reached uh, off the coast of Washington, Oregon, Northern California, and British Columbia. Now, area, this has been around for weeks and weeks and weeks. We've been talking about this. Area B is that cold water off the west coast of Mexico, known as the negative PMM, the Pacific Meridional Mode. And, of course, it has collapsed. You'll see that in a minute. It has warmed significantly. It was the interaction of these two features, which is why the Midwest and the Plain States had such a wet May, June, and July. Now, that's come to an end. And not surprisingly, the pattern has turned pretty dry in the Midwest here in August. So that's that feature, area B. And then area C is the, uh, the very warm uh, eastern Atlantic Ocean. So you can see the changes here in the last 15 days. And again, notice here, uh, we are seeing uh, more cold water developing off the coast of South America, La Nina conditions, a little more. And, but this whole area right here over the last 15 days off, off the west coast of Mexico has warmed, which means we, the negative PMM is weakening and falling apart. So that's an important part of the atmospheric pattern here. And the Atlantic also looks pretty chilly as well. Well, look, chilly is not the word. It's not warming up. Let's put it that way. Let me show you what I mean. This here is the Atlantic as of uh, August 20th. And you can see that the tropical Atlantic subtropicals are all fairly warm relative to normal. Uh, now, they're not nearly as warm as what we saw in the last uh, four, last five years. But it is warm. Now, that blue area in the coast of Bahamas, this, of course, is... Uh, this, of course, is Erin right here, uh, and, and it's caused upwelling, which is you can, why you can see the water temperatures uh, drop off here. That, this is why, by the way, when you see a hurricane stall in the Gulf of Mexico or the Atlantic for a couple of days, it actually does not necessarily cause it to intensify because the water gets turned over rapidly in a strong hurricane, and you end up getting upwelling and colder water coming to the surface. The other thing to keep in mind here is how warm water temperatures are in the Northeast Atlantic here, off the of Spain and France and, and Ireland and Great Britain. So that's going to be important because Erin is going to hit this part of the uh, European continent uh, in several days, and it's going to hit that really warm water and could become quite strong as an ocean storm. 
Now you can see the changes here over the last 15 days. Again, the tropical Atlantic, not that warm. As you can see, it really has not warmed up at all. Um, and and the, off the coast of Africa, just south of the Cape Verde, it's actually a little below normal. It's actually cooled off a little bit here. And again, the subtropical, the tropical Atlantic, only the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico is warmer than normal right now. See this? Only that area. And of course, right here in the north, far northeast Atlantic, from the Azores and the Canaries up towards Portugal, Spain, France, England, and Ireland. Now, one of the things that's useful to look at is the sea surface temperature anomalies, the pattern, okay, because this gives us a clue about the types of hurricane tracks that we'll see during the summer and the autumn months here. So if we look at this map in North, uh, the North Atlantic and see what's going on, let's just look at the, the big map here. Let me pull this up here a little bit so you can see it, bring it front. Um, okay, so this blows up. <clears throat> and what I want to point out here is uh, the Caribbean is pretty warm in this area, and um, the Atlantic, you have this little area of cool water off the southwest coast of Africa. So it looks to me that the sea surface temperature pattern configuration right now kind of matches Area 4, because the really warm water in the northeast Atlantic, we're seeing that, and then the cold water pocket off the, between Africa and the northeast tip of Brazil. And then the Atlantic is... is mm, sort of mild, but not really, and there are pockets of near normal sea surface temperatures. So again, it looks to me like, um, I guess the, the area to look at here is probably cluster, this area, cluster four. And what cluster four type of sea surface temperature anomaly patterns make are these types of hurricanes. And this is cluster four here, and you can see um, that they, uh, the tracks usually come through the Caribbean into the Gulf of Mexico and into the southeastern states. That's where they'd form, in the Caribbean or the far, or just, well, the Caribbean basin, and maybe the Atlantic near the Leeward Islands or Windward Islands, and then this is where they make landfall, in the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. So it looks like the sea surface temperature pattern favors, as we get into the heart of the hurricane season, uh, a cluster four, which is this area and these types of tracks. And of course, this also explains Aaron to some degree, as you can see. Now you could make a look about cluster three or cluster two, might be more like Aaron, but the problem is, Cluster 3 is much warmer tropical Atlantic. We don't have that. And Cluster 2 is kind of a close match, but it's much colder here in the eastern Atlantic from, the, from Spain all the way down to Africa. That's not what we're seeing at all. So I think it's Cluster 4 is the right match here. And also the sea surface temperatures are beginning to turn colder here a little bit as well off the coast of Brazil. Off the coast of Peru, I should say. Now, I posted this yesterday on the Facebook page. That was his... This is the infrared satellite picture from August 21. There's Aaron going bye-bye, and you can see area, oops, area one here. Um, this is 90L, which looked very strong yesterday. It's now much weaker. It's being pulled northward. Cluster two it looked very strong yesterday as well, and then cluster three. Now, cluster two I have some concern about because it's pretty far to the north. It's around 10 degrees latitude, as you can see. Let me see if I can move this a little bit. There you go. And uh, it's around 40 degrees west longitude. This looks like a... Caribbean Gulf of Mexico type of event, and I don't know about uh, number three yet. This is the afternoon update here on this Friday, and you can see that 90L has weakened quite a bit, and 99L has also weakened quite a bit. There's a lot of dust ahead of the 99L, but again, it is there clearly has a closed circulation. The Hurricane Center takes 90L up towards Aaron out to sea, uh, but then 99L, the one again in the southern Caribbean Islands, the southern Caribbean, which is what I'm thinking. And in fact, this here is the um, infrared picture. I'm sorry, the visible satellite picture of the loop here. And you can see this thing clearly has cyclonic circulation. Um, and if again, if I call it my arrow, you can see the feeder bands, see the cyclonic bands coming in here like this and like this and like, oops, and like um, another feeder band coming in here. See this one, another one here, another one here, another one here, another one here. This has clearly got low level circulation to it. So this is gonna develop presuming the dust doesn't kill the next 36 hours. I don't think it will. Uh, but because also it's staying weak, it's more likely to go due west. And again, that poses a threat for the Caribbean down the road. All right. Now, what, what happens to the Aaron? Well, eventually, here's Aaron for Monday, uh, August 25, in the North Atlantic, 960 millibars, and then weakens a little bit as it approaches <coughs> Ireland and then Western, Western France by Brittany. It weakens a little bit, but again, I'm not sure if that's taking into account the extremely warm ocean water temperatures. This is just a guess right now. I don't have a lot of faith in this. 
happening uh, in terms of the intensity. It could end up being quite a bit stronger and larger as an ocean storm when it slams into Western Europe, but we'll see. Okay, let's talk about the MJO. Here it is, the CFS, the European and CFS. They both show the same idea. Uh, the red line is the next five days. The blue line is the six to 10 day, and the purple line is um, week two and week three. And they both go into phase three and phase four, and they both turn into neutral circle uh, by the time you get to uh, the last few days of August. So um, in, in phase three, uh, and if we, if we were to go into phase four, but you can see the uh, ACE drops significantly in phase three and phase four. They're really quite uh, hostile towards uh, the, the activities definitely dropping off in phase three and four. It's still somewhat active, but not as active as phase um, one or phase two. Those are really the most active phases. Um, so we're definitely dropping off here in phase three or four. As long as we don't go into phase uh, uh, six and seven, those are the phases which are really hostile towards uh, tropical cyclone development. And we're not getting that. Uh, goes into neutral circle, but that's it. So we'll see what happens down the road. Now, here in the U.S., what does that mean uh, for phase three and phase four in terms of late August, September? Well, phase three is very dry. As you can see, the Midwest and the East Coast, the Deep South, Phase four, if we get into that, is pretty wet in the Midwest and the Ohio Valley, but it's dry on the East Coast and the Deep South. And the temperatures, phase three and four. Phase four is a little warmer over the Eastern U.S., not no real heat, just slightly warmer than normal. And phase three, everybody east of the Rockies has either normal or below normal temperatures. Now, this was the upper air map from August 19th, a couple of days ago. There was Aaron, you can see it, east of the Bahamas, all right? As we thought, there was a giant block. There's the upper low creating this weakness on the Western Atlantic Ridge. And here is the dome in the Southwestern states with the ridge dominating the Midwest, the Plains and the Canadian prairies. So it's warm, it's dry, um, but no real, not serious heat to speak of for, for August at all. Now, this is rainfall the last seven days. Um, now notice the concentration of the rain. The rain has been in the upper Midwest, Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Northern Illinois, Northwest, Indiana. Then there's a gap in here. Nothing's going on in the Ohio Valley, Tennessee Valley. Some rain in the southeastern states and then North Carolina, Virginia, into Pennsylvania, Maryland, Delaware, a gap here. And then lighter rains in New York and southern New England. This is continuing. This is like a 14-day trend. I should change this to the 14-day rainfall total. I should change that. And you can see it's the same thing. Notice the gap right in the Ohio Valley into the mid-Atlantic and to Virginia. Again, there's some rain in Pennsylvania and New York. But this huge gap right in here where you're getting the rain to the southeast and the rain in the upper Midwest, but nothing in between. That's kind of been the general trend. All right, so this here is the upper map for uh, coming in here for Saturday morning. We have this enormous trough dropping down upper low uh, into the Midwest. And look at the giant ridge in Northwest Canada, very pronounced. And you can see we're getting strong Northwest flow pulling in the cool air right out of the Canada, Northwest Canada into the Midwest, and eventually the East Coast. And the front, as you can see, it sweeps through the uh, Midwest and heads to the East Coast very, very rapidly. Um, it comes through pretty dry. And there's the front. Now, this is uh, Sunday night, Monday morning. The front is on the East Coast. Look at this monster trough for the Midwest. It's really quite impressive here. Um, a giant upper low north of the Lake Superior, pretty big upper low in eastern or northeastern Ontario, southwest Quebec. And then look at the giant trough here. And they're getting the flows coming straight out of Canada. So this is a nice, cool area that's coming in. No, we all, I'm sure you've seen this. Social media has got nothing but buckets of 6 to 10, 11 to 15, 8 to 14 day temperature forecasts, you know, everywhere in the Midwest, and the Deep South, the East Coast. And, the, you know, they look pretty impressive with, with the temperature anomalies. Um, and it is. It's, it's for late August. This is pretty darn impressive, i got to admit. Now, here's the pattern now for next for Wednesday, August 27th. Classic positive PNA. If this was November, December, January, this would be look, we would be freezing our asses off here. This would be a real cold air outbreak. Big, big ridge in Western Canada. Look at the flow out of Northwest Canada, Alaska, right straight southward uh, through Central Canada into the Midwest and the East Coast. And that would be a very big cold high pressure system. It's not. It's all late August. Let's keep keep that in mind. Uh, but still, it's pretty broad. Now the dew points here are going to be amazing. Amazing. It's going to be in the 40s, the Midwest, the New England, the Mid Atlantic, everywhere. The air is going to be cool. It's going to be dry. Let me show you what the temperatures look like. This is August 26th. Right now, the cool air is just getting in. Okay, uh, Monday to Tuesday in east of the Blue Ridge. But you can see New England's already in the 40s. Upstate New York is in low to mid 40s. Pennsylvania. The Greenbrier Valley, Western Maryland, low to mid 40s there, 
mm -mm -mm. and then look at those temperatures in the, mid in the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes. Now, the cold front will continue to press southward. This is the temperatures for August 27th. Yeah, we're talking uh, 50s, even in, you know, east of Richmond getting, uh, and then very nice temperatures down to Atlanta, down to Huntsville and Birmingham. A lot of 40s in the Ohio Valley. Autumn is on the way. It really is. This is, this is you know, a big deal. And then if you look at the five-day temperature anomalies, I mean, look at that. No, the West, that is a nice way to finish on August, boys and girls. That is just a nice way to finish on August. You really can't complain. Now, what happens beyond that? Well, as we get to next week, August 29th, August 30th, the trough remains very deep, as you can see. The ridge is huge over Western Canada, extremely amplified pattern, I must say. And the trough is massive on the East Coast. And that indicates a possible storm. And in fact, the European model is showing that down the road. You can see low pressure developing on the Georgia, South Carolina coast. Now, I don't know if this is a coastal storm or a subtropical storm or what have you. Uh, but right now it looks mostly to a coastal storm, as you can see, and it becomes a quite a big deal. The high comes down behind it, pulls down a lot of cool air, so uh, you expect another blast of cool air behind it. These are the min temperatures on August 28th, at the beginning of the 6 to 10 day, and it gets even cooler. You, yeah, temperatures are way, way below normally here for this time of year. In terms of the rainfall, not much. Next, uh, uh, This is the next seven days, as you can see. Um, it's the, the, you know, this is in very good agreement with the National Weather Service models. And it's really dry over the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, the Mid-Atlantic, New England, even in the southeastern states. Uh, just a lot of low dew points and high pressure and cool temperatures and I, ideal conditions. Get out there and enjoy it while you can, because who knows when the summer is going to actually end. Undoubtedly, the pattern is going to flip and September will come back with some heat, obviously. Um, so, uh, but you know, this looks like a very nice end of August. And look at the temperatures in the 6 to 10 day. Look at that. I mean, oh my God. But I just, you couldn't ask for a better end of August and early September. Now, what happens beyond that? Well, this here is uh, August 31. The trough is in place. Okay. And again, the high pressure is in Quebec, Canada, dominating everybody on the Midwest and the East Coast. Now, eventually what happens is uh, the trough, the pattern begins to change. Uh, instead of getting a big ridge in Western Canada, the pattern becomes more zonal on the West Coast here. So that becomes a little more zonal. You can see what's happening. And that allows more energy to get into the Midwest. And as a result, we see a lot more of this rain. The high moves off the coast. And then we start getting southwest flow, pulling up some moisture. So finally getting some rain in the Midwest here. Now, there's a lot of people talk concerned about the soybean crop in the Midwest with the dry conditions in the Ohio Valley. Whether these rains will get there in time, I don't know. Usually September, it's too late. Um, and then finally, as you can see, this is September 4. This looks like a, you can, the trough gets pulled back to the Midwest, and now we have a nice Midwest low pressure system with decent rain coming into the Ohio Valley, uh, humidity, increasing dew points coming up from the Gulf of Mexico on southwesterly winds. You can see that here. Look at the southwest winds coming up, feeding them more. So we have a nice rain event here. And again, and this high is going to bring warmer temperatures back into the uh, eastern United States after September 5, September 6, once it moves off the coast completely. So that's where we stand. Now, what happens as we go into September? Undoubtedly, there'll be some more warm days coming up. But like I mentioned, the heart of the summer is over. 95 degrees is done. That's not going to happen again from what I can see for anybody north of Interstate 40 and probably north of Interstate 20. Those are highways which run west to east across the southern states. You can take a look at that on your Google map. But that's what it looks like to me. I just don't see it coming back in that. Of course, September is going to have warm days. Temperatures getting into the mid upper 80s. Of course, it's going to happen, even around 90 degrees. I'm just talking about the extreme heat. Put a fork in that. It's done. The summer of 2025, in terms of the extreme heat, east of the Rockies, well, east of the Mississippi River, let's do it that way, looks pretty done as far as I can see. All right, this is a meteorologist, a DT from Weather Risk. I will see you over on the Weather Risk Grains uh, Twitter page, the Blue Sky page, of course, uh, the Facebook page, and the website.